Hello all, this is Dr. Alsip, and in this video we will be discussing cutaneous maps. And everyone loves a good map, and in this video we will be discussing how to differentiate between a dermatome and a peripheral cutaneous nerve map. And when I say the word cutaneous, what does that make you think of? Hopefully you recall it means relating to or affecting the skin, so these maps tell what nerves will innervate particularly or particular parts of the skin. And we're going to start with the dermatome map, and we actually touched on dermatome maps all the way back in our first session, but that was a long time now, so let's review here. A dermatome map shows the areas of skin innervated by a single cranial nerve or spinal nerve, and it's really the spinal nerves that have the bigger expanse. And the dermatome map is going to be on the left side here with the peripheral cutaneous map on this other side. And you can see that for the upper limb, say specifically, it's mostly cervical spinal nerves that are going to, um, going to serve these particular areas with a little contribution from T1 or thoracic spinal nerve 1. And when looking at the upper limb, you can see some distinct patterns. And understanding the development of the limbs is very helpful for understanding why it looks like this. Now the limbs grow as lateral protrusions from the trunk with the first digit or the thumb located on the cranial side or the superior side. So obviously this isn't developmental in this image, um, but this is an adult here, but you can think of development as in this direction. Therefore, the lateral side of the upper limb will have more cranially directed spinal nerves, as you see here, so the higher cervical numbers, and the more medial surfaces are innervated by more inferior spinal nerves, so C8, T1. That's why it's going to be, be directed uh, in this position. <clears throat> A dermatome map is different from a peripheral cutaneous map. So again, this is the dermatome side, this is peripheral cutaneous. And this will depict areas of skin innervated by specific peripheral nerves. And so typically nerves that are branches of plexuses. And these will be multi-segmental, meaning it has fibers from more than one spinal nerve. So again, this is the peripheral cutaneous map on this side, and you can see named nerves throughout here. So why would there be different maps? Well, if a patient is experiencing numbness or tingling in a particular area, if you think it is nerve damage, like pinching or something worse, it could in indicate damage to a specific cranial or spinal nerve, so a more proximal lesion or damage. Or, um, and, but more importantly, or damage to a peripheral cutaneous nerve, so a more distal lesion. So from your knowledge of or reference to both these maps, this can help guide you to best understand what specific nerves need to be tested, so both at the spinal nerve level as well as at the cutaneous peripheral nerve level to get at the root of the issue. So it's a more proximal issue, is it a more distal issue? And you can kind of go from there with your knowledge of these maps. Excellent, we have reached the summary slide. Now of likely interest to you, while you can certainly use these maps for reference, you do not need to memorize, as in it won't be assessed, the specifics in this map, unless it comes up in another learning objective. Instead, please focus on understanding the difference between the types of maps. Um, so what a dermatome map is going to tell you and what a cutaneous peripheral map will tell you. As always, please reach out with any questions and thank you for your time and attention.